Welcome back to another tutorial everybody. Today we're going to be painting this beautiful green leaf covered in water droplets. This one only uses three colors and I'll be using my Paul Rubens watercolor journal. It's a hot pressed cotton watercolor paper surface that I love for painting these small studies. My reference photo is from Pixabay. I'll leave a link in the description so you can download it and try this painting for yourself. Make sure you have a water jar, some paper towel for blotting, and some round brushes. I have my silver black velvet size 4 and size 8 round brushes. And to do the sketch, it's pretty simple. Just draw the outline of the leaf and then go ahead and draw all of the major droplets on that you see. This is a really fun subject matter for practicing your sketching skills because you don't have to make every single droplet exactly like what you see in the reference photo. You can make them different sizes. You can put them in different locations. It's totally up to you as the artist and no one will know the difference. So that's the best part about this. It's really hard to mess up a sketch on something that is so abstract. My three colors I'll be using today are my Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light, Hooker's Green, and Indigo. I spray my paints to activate them and then I start with clean water with my size 8 round brush. It's a good idea to start with something simple like the background for a quick and easy win. So I'm wetting the whole background with clean water right up to the edge of the leaf, being careful not to overlap into the leaf itself. The first color I'm going to drop in wet and wet is my Daniel Smith Indigo. Since the background in the reference photo is quite dark, I want to replicate that with a combination of indigo and Hansi yellow light, creating the blurred out look of a blurry background in a photo. Because we pre-wet the paper, those two colors are naturally blending together so softly. Remember that where your water goes, your paint will flow, and that's why when you paint with your water right up to the edge of the leaf, the paint is naturally going to stop there so that you end up with a beautiful hard edge and it looks like the leaf is coming forward, popping off the page up against the background. To start out with the leaf itself, I'm just taking my Hansa Yellow Light and painting a light wash of that wet on dry over the top of the entire leaf. You can, if you want to, avoid some of the highlights already, but I'm keeping it simple and just painting it entirely yellow. The next layer is a light wash of Daniel Smith Hooker's Green, once again painted right over the top of the yellow. This can be done either wet and wet or wet and dry. You can see now we've almost reached the correct value for the background and for the leaf. It will need to be a little bit darker and there needs to be a little bit of texture in the leaf itself. To accomplish this, I spread out the bristles of my brush and gently feather it across the surface of the leaf. I am avoiding those large droplets for now, but if you do make a mistake and accidentally cover up any of the droplets with this darker green color, that's totally okay. We are going to be using some opaque white paint at the end to paint in those bright highlights. So if you do end up covering anything up in this initial wash, don't worry, don't panic, just keep painting. It's going to look a little bit ugly at this phase. Every watercolor painting goes through an ugly phase like this. So just push through it and keep painting. You'll be so excited with the results if you stick with it and see it through to the end. If you guys feel like maybe this video is moving a little too fast, good news, it's available in real time. Just head over to emilyolsonart.com where you can sign up to become a Watercolor Mastery member. With your membership, you'll have access to this tutorial and over a hundred fully narrated real-time tutorials that all come with narrated video instruction, a reference photo, traceable line drawing, and a complete list of supplies used in each video. You'll also be able to join our private Facebook members only group where you can show off your amazing artwork and get feedback from other artists like you. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. Next, I'm going to be painting the dark shadows on each side of the largest droplets. For this, I'm pretty much using pure indigo. I might dilute it a little bit if it's a little too dark, but you can see with careful swooping motions, I'm painting around the outer edges of the largest droplet. I'm using a mixture of Hansa Yellow Light and Hooker's Green to paint the midtones within the droplet. Being careful to paint around the highlight since this is the most important part of this leaf. This large droplet captures all of our attention when we look at this image. It's so important to get the little details right in this one. So I'm pretty much filling it all in except for that one large highlight. The highlight at the bottom will add at the very end. Now to simulate some of the texture that we see inside of the droplet, I'm actually lifting some paint out using a swiping motion with my clean damp brush, removing the paint on the paper towel and then going back in and lifting some more. And you can see it looks like the nice stripes underneath the leaf. Each droplet almost acts like a little magnifying glass on the surface, showing the beautiful texture of the leaf beneath. And then to help it really stand out, I add a shadow all around and underneath the droplet itself. You can see, wow, it really pops off the page. 
We're gonna do this same process for each large droplet, starting with the outside shadow shape, adding the mid-tone green in the center, just painting around the major highlights. And that's what we'll do with this process all the way through the painting. This process might seem a little bit meticulous at first, and you might go cross-eyed looking at all of these tiny details, but it is so rewarding and gratifying to see it come together and come to life as you continue to add the shadow shapes and the mid-tones in the center of each droplet. It's almost like putting a puzzle together. You can really just get lost in the process and enjoy it every step of the way. Each little droplet is almost like its own little planet. It has its own unique shapes within it. So just enjoy the beauty and the differentiation between each shape and you'll never be bored with a project like this. So you can see I've added more mid-tones to each little droplet and then in some areas I may need to even darken the leaf itself by adding another layer of hooker's green just gently feathered across the surface of the paper. You do want to avoid your droplets at this stage because you don't want to cover them up with any unnecessary washes. We want to make sure that we're preserving all the highlights within those droplets. So one at a time, if you're right-handed like me, you might want to work left to right. Just work through every single little droplet. You don't have to paint every single one in the reference photo, by the way. It is your painting, it's your project, so make it exactly how you want to. With the droplets in the center, since there is a little bit of light shining right in that center line, you'll want to make them a little bit lighter in value than some of the other droplets. You can see I'm scraping my brush across the surface and adding another layer of green, particularly in between each droplet. And then taking my time, especially with the larger droplets, to get all the details and shapes of the highlights correct. We're almost there, and by this point you might be feeling so excited and so accomplished. The most fun part is yet to come. So once you're finished with all your mid-tones within each droplet, you can now begin to add bright white highlights. For this, I'm using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's a wonderful opaque watercolor paint. It tends to go on pretty thick, so you'll see when you apply it on the highlights of each little droplet, it might look really bright white. If that's the case, you can actually water it down a little bit on your palette and then go back in with a thinner wash of the white if you don't want it to be quite so bright. I love this product for my watercolor paintings when I need to apply tiny little white highlights. It's just so easy to do and it really adds so much impact to the final result. Within this largest droplet, there's some wonderful glistening, almost diamond-like shines within that droplet. So I'm painting those on using a stippling motion with the tip of my little size four round brush. I'm adding all of these tiny little highlights to every single droplet and even a couple more shimmering effects to the leaf itself. Add as many of these details as you like until you're happy with the result. There is our finished leaf with droplets painting. This one was so much fun to paint. Let me know if you guys would like to see more tutorials involving glistening objects like this and I'd be happy to oblige. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.